The Flash is a legacy character name that's been around for over 80 years now since Jay Garrick debuted in the comics in the 1940s. Since then, multiple different Flashes have passed Jay in popularity, most importantly Barry Allen and Wally West, and every one of those Flashes have their own supporting cast and rogues galleries. In this video, I'll be looking at every single Flash character to see how long it took them to debut in live action. However, this time around, I'll be emphasizing the ones who took the least amount of time because they were the quickest and the fastest, and that just fits the character here much, much better. I'll also mention that there are certain characters who I will not be going over because they aren't Flash characters in the comics, like Killer Frost and Vibe, who have a strong connection to the Flash on the show, but in the comics, they are completely separate characters. With all that out of the way, let's Let's begin. The first Flash related media was until the year 1990, as it took 50 years for any Flash related media to come out. However, 11 years prior to that, in the year 1979, the Legends of the Superheroes TV special came out and gave us the debut of two Flash characters, the first of whom is the Flash himself, however, not the original. Jay Garrick wouldn't debut until Smallville a good 25 years later, but Barry Allen made his debut in Legends of the Superheroes. 23 years after he debuted in the comics, alongside the Weather Wizard, who debuted in the comics 20 years prior. The 1990s Flash show's first episode saw the debut of a lot of new characters, two of whom have very, very short gaps from the comics. There is Nora Allen and Henry Allen way before any of the retconning of Barry's origin story, so they are just two regular parents, alive and not in prison, with a 28-year gap. Also, Iris West debuted in this episode, and this is the only episode of the show she appeared in, and she debuted in the comics 34 years prior. The next two characters from this episode are Wally West supporting characters, including Tina McGee, who in the comics was a short-time love interest for Wally West, who debuted in the comics in the year 1987, which is just three years before her debut on this show and in live action, which isn't even the shortest gap from this episode, as another Wally West supporting character and the main Wally West supporting character in Linda Park, his main love interest, debuted in the comics just one year prior, which you might think is the shortest gap in this video already. However, there is one character who also has a one year gap, but another character whose gap is just a couple Couple months, and we'll get to that character a lot later in this video, so stick around. While this show mostly used original characters as its villains, there are three iconic Flash villains who made their live action debut in this show. There's James Jesse, famously played by Mark Hamill, who debuted in the 12th episode, 31 years after his debut in the comics. There's also Captain Cold, who appeared in episode 17, 34 years after his debut in the comics, and his name is changed from Leonard Snart to Leonard Winters, because apparently it's illegal to have an ice-based character without an ice-based name name. I'm looking at you, Caitlin Snow. There's also Sam Scudder, aka the Mirror Master, who debuted in the first time in episode 19, 31 years after his debut in the comic. So that show only had one season, and there isn't another Flash-related media until the CW show in the year 2014. However, Smallville was in between the two, and there are two very, very important Flash characters who made their live-action debut on Smallville. In fact, two of the main Flashes themselves. Starting with Bart Allen, aka Kid Flash, aka Impulse, and also aka The Flash for a time, debuted in Smallville Season 4 Episode 5 in the year 2004, 10 years after his first debut in the comics. The original Flash, Jay Garrick, finally made his debut in 2010 in Smallville Season 9 Episode 11, 70 years after he first appeared in the comics. However, this is only a cameo, he wouldn't have a full speaking role until The Flash Season 2, five years later. However, despite this being a cameo, I'm still counting it in terms of what his gap actually is. And that brings us to 2014. We got here very quickly. I mean, look at the Superman and Batman videos. It took it took a lot longer to get to the year 2014. And that's just because we didn't really get much Flash-related content until 2014, which is where everything blew up. The CW show was a goldmine of live-action debuts, as from here on out, the rest of the video, you can look at the runtime. I don't know what it is yet, but it's basically 100% just the Flash TV show. There's nothing from the DCU Flash side of things, so there are no live action debuts there. And while there is other shows here, there's like one or two from Arrow and one from Supergirl, they're all really connected to the Flash anyway, either because they're crossovers or just because it's a Flash character appearing. 
continuing on Arrow, but from here on out it's almost entirely just The CW Show. The pilot episode saw the debut of Iris' father, who in the comics in the pre-New 52 comics was Ira West, and in the New 52 comics is William West, while in the show his name is Joe West. However, I'm considering it the same character because even in the comics, he doesn't really have much of a character beyond just being Iris' father, who debuted in the comics 51 years prior. Two other CCPD members debuted in this episode, including Fred Shire with a 13 year gap and David Singh with just a 4 year gap, and also two villains, however one of them isn't really a villain in the comics, that being Clyde Martin, the brother of Weather Wizard, while on the show he is just the first and original Weather Wizard, who debuted in the comics 54 years prior, and much more importantly is Eobard Thawne, aka the Reverse Flash, aka Professor Zoom, who debuted in the first episode with a 51 year gap, however we didn't 100% know that he is the Reverse Flash, and we didn't know his name is Eobard Thawne until much later in the season, however it's the same character so it doesn't really matter. Episode 2 saw the debut of Multiplex, who has been both a Firestorm and Flash villain, so I'm including him here, with a 36 year gap. But episode 4 saw the debut of Heatwave, with a 51 year gap, as well as Basil Nurblin, aka Colonel Computron, who had a very very minor role, but it is technically the same character, who debuted in the comics 33 years prior. Also in episode 4, the curator of the Flash Museum, Dexter Miles, made his debut with a 51 year gap, however on the show he's the curator of just a regular museum. In episode 5, Gorilla Grodd made his debut after 55 years of existing in the comics, and in episode 6, Girder made his debut with a 13 year gap. So not from The Flash, but actually from Arrow, Captain Boomerang made his first live action debut in Arrow Season 3 Episode 7, this is still 2014, as this was a teaser for The Flash Green Arrow crossover, and he had a 54 year gap. A character named Blackout, who debuted and is from the Flashpoint universe, debuted in Episode 7, only 3 years after his debut in the Flashpoint comic. The final character from 2014 is from Episode 8, the Rainbow Raider, who debuted in the comics 34 years prior. Moving on to 2015, the season gave the debut of Mason Trollbridge, who is a supporting Flash character in the comics, however on the show, his name is Mason Bridge, and he debuted in the comics 25 years prior. So we have a couple of villains in a row here, episode 11 also saw the debut of Hartley Rathaway, aka the Pied Piper, with a 56 year gap. Episode 12 saw the debut of Peekaboo with a 13 year gap. Cutting in the middle over here is actually a character from Arrow, Murmur, who is a Flash villain who was only ever used on Arrow and debuted in the comics 14 years prior. Episode 16 saw the debut of Lisa Snart, aka the Golden Glider, with a 38 year gap, and episode 17 saw the debut of Axel Walker, aka the Trickster, with a 13 year gap. Also in episode 17, Gregory Wolf kind of made his live action debut, it's a bit of a weird situation, the character's name was only ever given in a name tag, and he was played by a white actor despite being a black character in the comics, vice versa happens a lot, but a black character in the comics being played by a white actor, that's something that rarely ever happens and it's looked down upon. He was recast with a black actor and given a much bigger role in season 4, and you know that might be a different character, but regardless I think this technically counts as his live action debut 14 years after he debuted in the comics. The final character for season 1 comes from episode 19, Cecile Horton, who debuted for the first time 31 years prior to this in the comics. She's given a much larger role later on in the show compared to her appearance in season 1, but also she's given a much larger role on the show in general than she ever had in the comics, which to me is uh, not a good thing. So starting off season 2, but still in 2015, is Zoom, aka Hunter Zolomon, who debuted in The Flash season 2 episode 1 with a 14 year gap. There's also Patty Spivet, who debuted in the comics 38 years prior, and she debuted for the first time in the second episode of season 2. Episode 2 also saw the debut of Iris' mother, who on the show is named Francine West, while in the comics her name is Fran Russell, and her name here may very well be Russell, it's just West because she got married to Joe West, but she debuted in the comics 44 years prior. 
Cutting in a bit here is another character from Arrow, this time having no connection whatsoever to the Flash, other than the fact that he is a metahuman from Central City. It's just a Flash villain being used on Arrow, and he's never used on the Flash himself, that being Double Down, who debuted in the comics 14 years prior, and debuted on Arrow in Season 4, Episode 3. Episode 5 of Season 2 saw the debut of Jessie Quick, although her character is changed a bit. Instead of being the daughter of Johnny Quick, she's the daughter of Harrison Wells. And now Chambers is her middle name instead of her last name, and her name is Jessie Chambers Wells. And she debuted in the comics 23 years prior. The final character from 2015 is Wally West, one of like the two most important characters in the Flash mythos alongside Barry Allen. However, this character is technically the adaptation of two completely separate characters. One of them is Wally West, who debuted in the comics 55 years prior, but if that doesn't count, and I'd argue it doesn't, I'd say he's more of an adaptation of Wallace West from the New 52 comics, who debuted in the comics just one year prior. So it's either a 55 year gap and this is Wally West, or it's just a one year gap and Wally West still hasn't appeared in live action. For the purposes of this video, I'm considering both, but it will only matter for one of the end of the video lists, that being the shortest, because it's only one year which is tied for his wife, kind of, or his cousin's wife, Linda Park. So, starting off 2016, we have three villains in a row. First of all is the Turtle, who is one of the first Flash villains ever, initially being a Jay Garrick villain, who debuted in the comics 71 years prior. Here, he's given the identity of Russell Glosson. He doesn't have a name at all in the comics. Episode 12 of Season 2 saw the debut of Tarpit with a 15-year gap, and Episode 16 saw the debut of Trajectory with a 13-year gap. Episode 18 saw the debut of Ashley Zolomon, who in the comics was the wife and then ex-wife of Hunter Zolomon, aka Zoom. Zoom as a character is changed drastically for the show, and here Ashley Zolomon is actually his mother. So, a completely different character technically, but I don't think the name Ashley was used by mistake. Okay, so now we have a very, very long streak of just villains, starting in Season 2, Episode 19 with Griffin Grey, or The Griffin, who debuted in the comics 10 years prior. There's also Black Flash, who on the show was just Zoom turned into a Time Wraith or whatever he is. In the comics, those two characters are completely separate, and Black Flash debuted 18 years prior. Starting off with Season 3, the first episode saw the debut of The Rival, who is the reverse Flash for Jay Garrick and one of the earliest Flash villains, who debuted in the comic 75 years prior. Season 3 Episode 2 saw the debut of Dr. Malf, I mean Dr. Alchemy, who debuted in the comics 58 years prior. Also in Episode 2 is Savitar, who is in kind of like a Wally West situation where he's based off of two different characters. There's his namesake, Savitar, who he has much less in common with than the other character, but Savitar debuted in the comics 21 years prior. The other character is an evil future version of Barry Allen, who also wears a blue suit who is ripped right out of the Out of Time New 52 Flash comic, and it's pretty clear that this version of Savitar is based off of him, much more so than he is based off of Savitar, and he debuted in the comics just two years prior, so when he said that he's the fastest man alive, well, he wasn't technically correct, because so far we already know that Wallace West and Linda Park are both faster, but Savitar is definitely up there for the sake of this video. Then episode 3 saw the debut of Magenta, who is a Wally West love interest slash enemy, and debuted in the comics 34 years prior. Then there's The Top, who debuted in episode 4, and is a gender-bent and renamed version of the character. Instead of Roscoe Dillon, she's Rosa Dillon, and the original Top debuted in the comics 55 years prior. Episode 6 gave us the debut of the Flash villain Shade, who was one of the early Flash villains being an enemy of Jake Garrick, and he debuted in the comics 74 years prior. Season 3 Episode 9 gave us the debut of Plunder as the last character from 2016 who debuted 61 years prior. 
Starting off with 2017 is Clive Yorkin in Season 3, Episode 12 with a 39-year gap. Season 3, Episode 13 saw the debut of Solovar, the first non-villain in a while, although he was only really ever used as a villain on The Flash with a 58-year gap. Abracadabra made his first debut in live action as the last character from Season 3 in Episode 18, 55 years after his first appearance in the comics. Moving on to Season 4, the Samoroids made their debut in the first episode with a 49 year gap, but much more importantly is their creator on the show, The Thinker, who was one of the main Jay Garrick villains from all the way back in the 40s with a 74 year gap. In Season 4, Episode 5, Amina Black made her live action debut with a 16 year gap, and that brings us to the character with the shortest gap in this video, that being Nora Allen aka XS who, much like Wally and Savitar, is based off of a couple different characters. This character is actually based off of three different comic book counterparts, the first of whom with the biggest gap is Dawn Allen, the original daughter of Barry Allen, and half of the Tornado Twins, who debuted in the comics 47 years prior. If this was the original timeline in the Arrowverse, then her name would have been uh, Dawn Allen, but because Eobard killed Nora, then Barry named his daughter after his mother mother, so her name is Nora Allen, which is a different character in the comics. Before we get to that character, however, her other alias, XS, is also a completely different character and a member of the Legion of Superheroes, and she debuted in the comics 23 years prior. Finally, the big winner of this video is Nora Allen, a character from an alternate timeline, an alternate future in the comics, and the daughter of Barry Allen and the Green Lantern Jessica Cruz. So while this is a technicality, since she is based off of a character with a 23 year gap and even a character with a 47 year gap, she is also based off of Nora Allen, who debuted in the comics in October 2017, while this version of Nora Allen debuted on Supergirl Season 3 Episode 8 as a part of the Crisis on Earth X crossover in November 2017, so that's just a single month, one month between her comic debut and her live action debut, which is 100% the shortest gap out of any single one of these videos as far as I could tell or as far as I've gone over so far. Just know that it won't get shorter than this, but do stick around for the rest of the video anyway for the top 5 longest and top 5 shortest lists. So moving on to 2018, we also have a lot of villains in a row now, starting with Fallout, who with a 17 year gap, who debuted in episode 10 of season 4, Big Sur, who debuted in the next episode in episode 11 with a 34 year gap, and The Fiddler with a 70 year gap as they debuted in episode 14. The Fiddler in the comics is Isaac Bowen, while on the show she is Izzy Bowen, so it's a gender bent character, and an actual 100% like the same character, Isaac Bowen. Bowen wouldn't debut in live action until Stargirl two years later, but a gender bend doesn't mean a different character. The final character from season 4 is the Folded Man, another villain, and there are a couple other villains in a row after this, with a 19 year gap. The first episode of Season 5 saw the debut of Cicada with a 17 year gap, the fourth episode saw the debut of Spin with a 10 year gap, although this character was another gender bent character, in the comics his name is Orbach without a last name, while in the show her name is Spencer Young. Cutting in yet again with Arrow, Season 7 Episode 4 saw the debut of Jarrett Parker with a 30 year gap, he's a very very minor Flash supporting character who never appeared on The Flash, only on Arrow. Episode 5 of Season 5 saw the debut of another very early Jay Garrick villain in Ragdoll with a 76 year gap. Two episodes later in Episode 7, a character named Joss Jackham, aka the Weather Witch, made her debut. While in the comics, this character is a baby named Josh Jackham, so not only is it a gender bent character, but she is very aged up and given the super villain identity in Weather Witch, but Josh Jackham debuted 17 years prior. Moving on to 2019, The Flash Season 5 Episode 13 saw the debut of Goldface, who is both a Green Lantern and a Flash villain, with a 54 year gap. The Flash Season 5 Episode 18 was titled Godspeed, and finally gave us the debut of Godspeed, after what felt like such a long time of people asking for so long for this character to debut. Or, it only felt like a long time, because Godspeed actually has one of the shortest gaps in this video, as he debuted in the comics in 2016, which is just three years prior. 
In that same episode, a character named Frank Curtis made his debut, although he was gender bent into Frankie Curtis at a 40 year gap. Moving on to season 6, the first episode saw the debut of Chuck, a character who kind of feels like he is an uh, original character, but he actually is from the comics and was a supporting character slash sometimes enemy to Wally West with a 31 year gap. Then in that very same episode is Bloodwork, a very very new Flash villain from the comics who debuted in 2017, meaning that this character only has a 2 year gap which definitely makes it into the top 5 shortest. Going from one of the shortest gaps to one of if not the single longest gap in this video is Joan Garrick, the wife of Jay Garrick, who debuted basically around the exact same time that Jay did in the comics, and she has a 79 year gap, which is in fact the longest gap, surrounded by a lot of other characters in this video with very short gaps, the last one and the next two, Gene Husk and Joseph Carver, both debuting now 2020 in Season 6 Episode 10. Uh, Gene had a 3 year gap and Joseph had a 4 year gap. The only other character from 2020 is Ava McCullough aka the Mirror Monarch who debuted in The Flash Season 6 Episode 12. She is yet another one of the amalgamation characters as she is kind of a combination of two different characters. She is like 95% Evan McCullough aka the Mirror Master who debuted in the comics 31 years prior but her name Mirror Monarch comes from another character, a future good guy version of Mirror Master and like kind of like a police officer and he debuted 10 years prior. Moving on to 2021, we have the three uh, hosts of the forces. We have Forza, the host of the Strength Force, who debuted two years prior, with her name being changed from Alexa Antigone to Alexa Rivera. There's also Psyche, who debuted in Season 7, Episode 5, also with a two-year gap. And Steadfast, who in the comics is the avatar of the Still Force, while in the show, Dion Owens is the avatar of the Still Force. So not really the same character, but Steadfast's name in the comics was never given. So we can assume that maybe they are the same characters, and that character's name in the comics is Dion Owens. Regardless, his character debuted in Season 7, Episode 6, and also has a two-year gap. So all three of these characters have some of the shortest gaps in this video. I wanted to mention the three Force characters together, but actually before Dion Owens debuted, Kristen Kramer made her debut, and she debuted in the comics 11 years prior. Unfortunately for all of us, Chill Blaine made his debut in The Flash Season 7 Episode 7 with a 30 year gap. He's given the name Mark Blaine and there have been like 7 different Chill Blaines in the comics. None of them have ever gotten a name while on the show he has and it's Mark Blaine. The Flash Season 7 Episode 16 saw the debut of the Arrowverse's version of Bart Allen aka Impulse who has already appeared in live action, so why am I talking about him? Well, if Nora Allen is an adaptation of Dawn Allen, then Bart Allen in the Arrowverse has to be an adaptation of Don Allen, as he is the son of Barry Allen here instead of the grandson, and Don Allen debuted in the comics 53 years prior. So now in 2022, Season 8 Episode 6 saw the debut of another Flash family member in Avery Ho with a 6 year gap, however we haven't seen her as the Flash yet, or that version of the Flash, we haven't seen her as a speedster at all. A villain named Peter Olof made his debut in Season 8 Episode 16 with a 35 year gap, and Mina Dohan aka Negative Flash or Fast Track made her debut in Episode 17 of Season 8 with a 6 year gap. Looking ahead to Season 9, in the year 2023, we know two new characters who will make their debut in that season, including Red Death, who I already mentioned in my Batman video, since this character is definitely both a Batman character and a Flash character, and Red Death will have a 6 year gap. And there's also Owen Mercer, the second Captain Boomerang and the son of the original, who will have a 19 year gap as of his debut in Season 9. And that is it for every single Flash character who has appeared in live action. Without further ado, however, let's go over the top 5 longest and top 5 shortest lists. Starting with the top 5 longest, because like I said, I'm putting emphasis more on the shortest. Plus, all the characters from the top 5 longest list are Jay Garrick related characters. Jay Garrick will not be included since he has a 70 year gap, and 5th place, the Turtle, has a 71 year gap, alongside 4th place, the Thinker, with a 74 year gap, the Rival in 3rd place, with a 75 year gap, Ragdoll in 2nd place, with a 76 year gap, and like I said, Joan Garrick, with a 79 year gap in 1st place. 
And that brings us to the top 5 shortest, or how I like to put it for this video, the top 5 fastest characters to get from comic book page to live action. In 5th place is both David Singh and Joseph Carver at 4 years. 4th place is Tina McGee, Blackout, Godspeed, and Gene Husk at 3 years. 3rd place is Bloodwork, Feorza Psych, and Steadfast, plus the future Flash at 2 years. 2nd place is Linda Park and Wallace West at just 1 year, and as you already know, Nora Allen is in 1st place with just one month. Meaning that, there's no disputing it, XS, or actually not XS, Nora Allen, aka Cruz, is the fastest speedster ever. So that is it for this video, make sure to check out my other videos on this topic, starting with Superman and Batman, and if this is in the future, I probably have already made more, and if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe dibble goodbye.